Hi, my name is Didier. We are at the lab at La Maison de Whiskey over in Paris. Um, today we're going to talk about the difference between toast and char when we're talking about oak barrels, as you can see here. So for that, we've got our friends over at Michter's. Hi, how are you doing? Hello, Didier. Thank you, I'm doing well. And so, let's talk about char and toast. All right, so first of all, uh, American whiskey law states that for bourbon and rye, you need to use new charred oak barrels. Um, so, charred is something that we're not too familiar with here in France, for example. What is the difference between a char and a toast, which is what we have more commonly here for, for cognac, for example? So, toasting is the art of slow heating the wood over time. And the importance of it is there's a lot of beautiful characters in the wood but in order to get them, they only break down over time and temperature. So different profiles will allow you to extract different um, compounds from the wood um, based on the temperature and time of heating that barrel. Charring is the act of igniting the interior of the barrel with flame. And it takes much less time to do a char than it does to do a toast. Toasting takes hours, whereas charring is really anywhere from 15 seconds, maybe up to a minute. Um, and the deeper, the longer you leave that time of charring, the deeper char layer you will get in the barrel. So you guys over at Mictors, you actually do both. You use toasted barrels, which you then char, uh, and more interesting as well, you also put out some uh, toasted barrel finishes on some of your, your bottlings. Can you tell us a little bit more about that, please? The toasted barrel finish products are something that we love very much. Um, the toasted barrel series includes the toasted barrel bourbon. It includes the uh, toasted barrel strength rye. And it also includes the toasted sour mash. Um, the process is the same for all of them, although the toasting profiles differ. But the idea is that we take the spirit, we age it like we normally would. We age our bourbon and rye typically five to seven years until we believe they're the quality that we want them to be for release. And then when we're ready, when they're ready, we take them, we take the whiskey out of the barrel and then we place it in a new toasted only barrel for a finishing process for a short period of time. Now we don't disclose the time because it varies between um, the different releases that we're doing. But what's happening is, is you really get an understanding then of how the bourbon, for example, changes. You know, regular bourbon goes into a toasted only cask for a finishing process. How did the toasting of that barrel alter that final spirit? It's really, really interesting. Um, it drives some beautiful campfire, toasty, sweet characters. It gives this beautiful roundness and uh, richness, and it's really just a lovely uh, thing to experience. The toast and char does change for us depending on the, the release, especially with the special release products. We're always thinking through what is it that we're trying to achieve. And so, as far as the char and the toast, what do they bring to the whiskey during the maturation process? How do they age differently? The maturing process is a complicated series of reactions that are the result of whiskey interacting between the wood um, and the spirit, you know, and, the, and that interaction between them. Now, here at Michter's, we do heat cycle during the winter months to try to increase the amount of interaction between the wood and the whiskey to further increase the, the characters that we're extracting from the wood. Um, but the toast and char process plays an integral role in how are we going to create that final spirit. I love the fact that you have this beautiful toasted and charred stave in front of you which you can really see the whiskey layer and how deep the whiskey has penetrated into the wood. When you toast and char a barrel, it breaks down the compounds in the wood such that the whiskey can penetrate deeper into the wood and start to extract a lot of those beautiful characters from the wood itself. Now, the beauty of charring is it does a couple different things. One is it will create and open up the wood 
um, so that you can start to get that movement between um, the whiskey and the wood, but you're gonna move it through a red layer. And that red layer is a caramelization layer that's been created behind the char. And it's a caramelization of sugars. So as it's moving through, it's gonna be extracting char characters. It's going to be um, you know, also acting as a filter to keep in what you wanna keep in and get rid of what you don't want um, in the whiskey. And it's a natural filtering process that's happening inside the barrel as that whiskey is moving in and out of the capillaries of the wood over time. But you have to be careful with char because it can also extract characters that you don't want it to extract um, from your whiskey. So that's the importance of determining the right char layer, but you also have to have the right char layer with the right toasting process because all of the good work that you do to break down the compounds from the toasting process, you can literally ruin that by having the wrong char level to balance. A lot of toasting and charring is about the artistry of balance and what you're trying to extract from the wood barrel itself and the marriage between that whiskey and wood and what you want to keep and what you want to emphasize through you know, the aromas and things like that. Finally, flavor-wise, in the end, when the whiskey's all done, uh, what are you going to get as far as profiles between the toast and the char? Now, the lighter the char level, the more fruit esters you will get, um, the more spice, things like that. The deeper um, the char, the more dark, smoky, um, kind of uh, oaky characteristics you will get. So that's the importance of understanding your char and how you're balancing that with your toast profiles. Now the toasting is very interesting to me because some people don't realize how high temperature toast um, can yield beautiful chocolate, mocha, deep, rich, dark characteristics that can really influence the final um, product. Whereas, you know, the softer, um, lower temperature toast for shorter periods of time um, can really play more in the space of your fruits and florals and um, spice note. Common things that uh, we talk about with our whiskeys are beautiful fruit, um, like apricots and stone fruit, beautiful rich vanilla and caramel and burnt sugar characteristics um, that really enrich your experience as well as with our rise it's a beautiful gentle spice that gives you a beautiful warmth um, and enjoyment for the spirit not something that's extringent it's not full of tannin it doesn't burn um, and give you this undesirable finish it's a beautiful smooth finish that's meant to be a great sipping whiskey, one that you can enjoy. And that's um, part of the house style of Michter's is rich, flavorful, easy drinking whiskey um, that you can really enjoy um, no matter what the occasion. All right, well, thanks for answering all our questions. Thank you all so much and stay safe. Can't wait to drink with you all. Cheers. Thank you at home for watching. Give us a thumbs up if you like what you see. Follow us for more. And the question of the day for the comments is, well, since American whiskey has to be aged in new charred barrels, uh, what happens with the barrels once they've been used? What do they do with it? If you think you know, put it in the comments, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>